and your retirement. How much money would you need for retirement? These are questions that are very important when it comes to retirement planning. That is what we do at UFCOP Financial Group. We help you make sure that you don't outlive your money at retirement. We make sure that even if you have a four, do you have a retirement plan? Where do you intend to spend your retirement? How much money would you need for retirement? These are questions that are very important when it comes to retirement planning. That is what we do at UFCOP Financial Group. We help you make sure that you don't outlive your money at retirement. We make sure that even if you have a 401k or you have a retirement plan already in place, we make sure that it is the right plan for you. Whether you just left an old employer, we help you to roll over your 401k. Whether you want to set up an IRA, we help you to do that. There are various ways of planning for retirement, but you need to do it with an expert. Call us today at 347 499-1618. Email us at info at ufcoffee.com or speak to any of our account reps and we'll help you make sure that you have the right retirement plan that is suitable for your goals. I am Ursula Kofi, a financial service consultant and also the corporate president for UF Coffee Financial Group. Thank you. everyone welcome to a walk with god show my name is miranda and i'm gonna be your host for today thank you so much for joining uh thank you for watching please share this video to your friends and family so they can also tap in and join the discussion for today this month of april we're going to be talking about our identity and purpose in christ a very important topic for us christians and 
find and be conversations. So share and stay tuned. Do not go anywhere. Just grab some water and just join the chat. I'm not here alone today. I'm here with two amazing uh, people of God that are going to help me dissect this topic for to this afternoon. So at this juncture, I'd like to invite them uh, so we can get the conversation started. I have here with me Pastor S. Monbrope and Mrs. Christiana Okanta. I hope I mentioned your name right. <laughs> Yes, you are right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Pastor Esmond is not a new face here. He's been with us since the beginning of the show. So I will allow Ms. Mm -hmm. uh, Christiana to uh, introduce herself. Tell us about who you are, how you met FBN, and what you do. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I'm Mrs. Christiana Okanta, and I am the CEO and founder of Divine Empowerment Outreach. It's all about healing, restoring relationship, building healthy relationship. And um, Lady Esla at Pastor Esmond's wedding, that was my first time of meeting her. And with her nice gesture, and we, we, we encountered and we all, I mean, mingled. And I know she has been asking me to come on, but due to time, I said, this time God made a way for me to come on so yeah that is a little bit about me thank you so much wow thank you so much so is your ministry where where, where are you located i'm in atlanta georgia but we have a zoom meetings twice in every month every other thursday yeah okay do you have like a a way that people can reach you like a social media account or anything like that yes we do have um instagram and then also uh, Facebook, but Instagram is Divine Empowerment Outreach. But on Facebook, I normally share through my account, which is Nanepia Okanta on Facebook. Yes. Cool. Thank you so much. God bless you and thank you for joining. Um, you. Pastor Esmond. Okay, I guess wow. you can also introduce. <laughs> Guess, First of all, I don't I like the special treatment she's getting because so the first time I came on, I wasn't asked any of these questions. I wasn't asked my social media. I also uh, have social media. Hi, everyone. I have Instagram. Wow. <laughs> I have Instagram. Okay, like, I guess you can introduce but yeah, yourself. Uh, it, it's been a while, but yes, this is your brother, uh, Brobe, Esmond. And yeah, I'm, I'm a new convert. I just came to Christ not long ago, but I'm still learning each day as the Holy Spirit helps me. So yes, we're all here to learn together and it's gonna be an amazing time with these two wonderful bias and host and guest, amen. <laughs> he is not a new convert. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. Um, I pray that today's discussion, um, first of all, will lead people to Christ, will bring understanding on this topic. And I pray that the Holy Spirit through you guys will give us insight on this topic and then we'll be changed after this discussion in jesus name we pray amen okay so uh, moving on thank you so much to fbn family for giving us the opportunity to be on here this afternoon like i already said guys if you haven't already shared this video please do so the first question um how would you define identity uh, mrs christiana i'll start with you please Okay, first of all, um, thank you so much for the question and thank you, thanks to God for giving us this opportunity. I also thank um, Pastor Francis and Lady Isla for this opportunity. I thank each and every one, my spiritual parents, uh, Apostle Stephen and Mama Cecilia. God bless them all for their support and my husband as well, Mr. Okanta. When it comes to identity, it's very broad, very, very broad. and. I don't think we can dissect every detail within this few minutes or hours that we will spend here. But um, one thing that I will, or how I would define identity is the fundamental or characteristics that distinguish an individual or a group. It's basically who you think you are, what defines you. So let's, um, look at that as a, in a job interview. When you go for an, a job interview, the interviewer will ask you a simple question. Tell me about yourself. And mm. they, they want to know the qualities that you have. 
in order for them to make a decision whether you're fit for the job or not. So when you go out there, you have to be able to express yourself. So if you don't know who you are, and then you go there and then it's like, oh, I think um, I, I, I have four kids. I think I come from Ghana. That is not what they are looking for. So you have to be able to come out with, um, I'm a hardworking person, I'm compassionate, I have empathy, so there, I'm creative. There are certain qualities that only you know. I just want to put a disclaimer here. When you talk about identity, it's not about what people think you are. Mm. It's about who do you think you are. Because one thing that we can, I, I can share is what you give people, how you encounter people, it's how people will see you. And mm -hmm. we encounter people in different ways. So people will have different perspective about us. That is not the issue here, but who do you think you are? That is how you can define your identity. Thank you. Wow. Wow, that was powerful. God bless you. Uh, Pastor Esmond. Yeah, that was very good. Mrs. Okanta, you actually did a very good job. I think you actually talked about it all, but you, you took the intellectual perspective. I'm, 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 some of us have not really been to school. Some of us are not learned like that. So I'm going to say exactly what you said in, you know, layman's terms to those of us with high school diplomas. And this is the thing. Identity is your own awareness of yourself. It's an awareness. And I think that's how she said it. And it's just beautiful. It is an awareness of who you think or who you think or who you are. It's, it's a conscious effort that, okay, this is who I am. This is what I am. And that is where we find identity. When a person comes to a place where he is convinced, he's more aware, this is me. That is identity. Okay. Thank you so much. So now when we come to our identity in Christ, um, how should we define ourselves in Christ? What is our, ident our identity in Christ? I'll start with you again, Mrs. Christiana. Okay. Um, I guess today you are on me today, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> ladies first, right? <laughs> yeah, ladies first. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, my dear. Um, so when we talk about identity in Christ, um, the key word here is Christ. So now we know our identity. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to Christ, you know, we have a different religions. But this time we are talking about Christ. So who, who are we in Christ? Our mentor here is Jesus Christ. So he is the one that we are following his steps. So I believe that when we're talking about our image, who do we think we are in Christ? We are new creators. Christ has saved us. We are redeemed. We are, the Bible says that we are royal priesthood. So we are God's image. He created us in his own image. That So this is the confidence that we do have, that as a Christian, you are not just anybody. You don't have to live your life anyhow. You don't have to do certain things anyhow. But when we talk about your identity in Christ, you have been set apart for greater works. You have been set apart to do more. You have to be able to follow the Jesus Christ that we have, the works that he did. That is what we, we, we have assurance that this lifestyle that he lived, this is what we will follow. So that is what I will say. I will leave the rest to our very own pastor. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pastor Esmond. <laughs> yes, I think the woman of God did so well. I, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to put her on the spot, but she did so well. And that is really amazing. So now let's look from this perspective. We said that identity is what? An awareness, right? Of who you are. That is in general. So now yeah. link this same thing to Christ. It's an awareness of who you are in Christ. And when you become aware of who you are in Christ, what does it entail to be in Christ? What is the values of Christ? What is the commandments of Christ? What is the life of Christ? Once you identify yourself as that, now you put on that value, then you begin to do everything like that. So let's say my last name is Brobe, right? So I have a family and someone identifies as the uh, part of the Brobe family. There are certain things specific to Brobe family that we would do, right? 
there are mm-hmm. certain things specific when you identify first you identify that you, okay i'm part of this thing then everything that governs it there are some there can be a law are you Ghanaian? okay identify as Ghanaian. there are certain cultural aspects there are certain values there are certain languages you have to have you have to adapt you have to learn to walk in the true identity so being in christ is just basically you having the consciousness that okay now i am part of christ and everything that governs Christ, everything that Christ did, everything that Christ taught, everything that Christ continued to teach, I am. It is a part of me, and that is also what shapes my life. So that is how I'm going to say it. Mm, amen. Amen. So being consciousness of who we are in Christ. So what does it mean to live as our true self in Christ? So I know that we define identity as who we are. You know what composes of Miranda and Pitu and our identity is Christ is when you come into Christ, you have to know who you are in Christ, what Christ has said about you. So merging these two, can we live as our true, like just ourself in Christ? Or when we come to Christ, we have to live like Christ. Uh, Pastor Esmond, I'll let you start. <laughs> okay, so now it, 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 it actually has to start from a point, right? The reason why most people can never identify themselves is that it takes more than just you getting up, okay, I'm in Christ, I'm a new creature. No. Mm-hmm. You need Christ perspective is more spiritual aspect. You need to discern. Why well, and I'm not trying mm-hmm. to be too spiritual, I'm not gonna be holy holistic, but there has to be a discernment of who you actually are. And I'm gonna give an example. So Jeremiah chapter one, right? When Jeremiah and, and let, let me put it before I go to Jeremiah. Once you become aware that, okay, I have to discern to be who I am, you have to also believe in someone who is above, who is the creator, and he is the one who actually, you know, like, who is, uh, he's like the creator of man, that you are created by someone, and there is a a supernatural being, a superior being, who is over all the affairs of man, who actually determines what happens to man. Some people can call it predestination. There, there is a designer who actually designed you in a certain way. You have to believe in that. That, okay, there mm. is a God who created me in a certain way. And you have to now have the discernment to discover the way he created you. That is the best mm. way to say it. So one, to even discover identity, one, believe that there is someone who designed it. What is the identity of a car? What is the identity of a... There is a manufacturer. There is someone who is a bird, Right? Who made a thing to live to a potential? Who made a thing to identify as something? Once you mm-hmm. acknowledge that aspect, so God can never be taken out. So when you know the God factor, now you have to discern what did God make you? Now, let me go back to Jeremiah. Jeremiah was living his life. Then God comes to him as an adult and says, Master, I want you to change your mind. Because when you were in your mom's womb, I had already picked you, identified you, made you a prophet. So whatever you are doing, you can be a carpenter, you can be like a fisherman. Whatever you are doing, now, drop it. You need to start working in your true self. You need to start working in your true identity. The Bible probably did not say how old Jeremiah was when God actually came to give him that talk. That means all his life, he was doing other things without discerning mm. what he truly is from the womb. Right? Mm. So that's what I'm saying. Like identity, actually, to really discover identity, your true self, you need to discern. You need to really know what God created you to do. There are some of us, we are supposed to solve family issues. Some of us, there are a pattern of darkness in our family, and we are those who are supposed to break that cycle. Some of us, mm-hmm. we are supposed to establish banks like, the, you know, Osla and Francis Kofi, you know, financial group that we will employ people, that we will teach people the way. Some of us are supposed to be men of God, like Mrs. Okanta, who is a woman of God, who has, you know, a divine empowerment, empowering people. You need to now discover what am I called to do? Because if you don't discover that, you will do you live your life like everyone else. And you will waste life. So I'm not going to say it all, but I'm just going to push this. Identify the God factor. Then now you have to discern who I am. What did God actually create me to be? That is your true self. Everything else will not satisfy you. Everything else will not give you fulfillment until you discern and know who you were really created for. Because of that, I can really go on and on. But yes, that is what I believe is true self. Mm. Mm. So it all starts from knowing Christ first. Because without knowing him, you cannot identify your truth. So thank you so much. God bless you. That was a powerful submission. Uh, Mrs. Okanta. Thank you so much. Wow. Pastor Esmond really nailed it. 
um, I will just add my two cents to it. So when we talk about living your true self, let me uh, bring it into practicality. We are all created in a unique way. We all have our unique selves that it doesn't matter if you, you were born on the same day, you have the same name, even twins have unique um, identity. So it's yeah. about you embracing who you are. Most of the times, we have to be intentional and be authentic. That is mm -hmm. the key word here. We have to be authentic. And sometimes there are certain challenges that comes our way. That brings a light to us that this path or this area God wants me to focus on. Certain things that you are passionate about. What are the things that you hear that really saddens your heart? That you, you think that there should be a change, there should be sin, that must be done. So if you are able to discern, as I said, discern certain things, it comes into reality. That is when you begin to know who you are and then you begin to study, acquire knowledge. How do you grow in those, in those areas? That is how you are living your true self. In this generation, one thing that I have realized, a lot of people are learning from social media. And I will say that sometimes people are frustrated and they just sit right there and then begin to share anything. They don't have facts about anything. It's all about opinions. So if yep. you don't have knowledge about what you are going through, the challenge or the knowledge that you, are, you need to acquire or something that you need to get information for, if you don't learn, if you don't study, you will begin to make a lot of mistakes. So living your true self is being authentic. And then also the Christ that we are following. What are the things that he is doing? What are some of the principles, the values that he is presenting to us for us to work, work on? So when you are able to identify, as Pastor said, Christ, and then you discern of what you are born to do, that is when you begin to grow and transform your life in that area. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. So this just came into my mind. You see, um, not everyone got to know Christ like growing up. Some people may have lived a life that was not in Christ. And now, like, let's say they used to rob a lot. They used to sleep around. And now they're labeled as such. And now they come into Christ. And people still see them as their old self. And, and not, you know, being in Christ when they're doing right, the good things and trying to live right. Everybody that sees them just keep reminding them of their past and keep ident identifying them of how they used to know them. So if you're such a person, like, how... How should you, how would you react? Like, what can you do? I mean, I don't think you can obviously change people's mindset about you, but how can you do so that you, because it can lead to people feeling down, people saying that, oh, after all, nobody even cares about me coming to Christ and how I've changed. I might as well just go back and back into my sins, back to the way I live, because that's how they used to know me anyways. At that point, what, what advice will you give to such a person? And anyone can go. Okay, then I'll just go there. So this, this, this is we have to see it from this perspective. <laughs> and you, I think that Ghanaians they have a proverb that when God was calling someone or someone was repenting, there was no one else. It was just you and your God, right? So, so this is the thing: let your life shine, or let your light shine in the sight of men, that they will see it and glorify God. Simple as that. You cannot go about convincing people. I used to rob. I'm done. No, 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 no. Live your life. <laughs> Let people now see, wow, this guy, I know him. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I see some of my friends and I'm shocked. I'm like, wow, what a shock. This guy, he, <laughs> he, he, he never said anything. One right. day I was watching YouTube and I saw some of my, they were really terrible. My bad friends in Ghana, like they were in Ghana, like very bad. One of them, it was a worship event. He was crying, rolling on the floor. I, I was shocked. This guy, <laughs> I just I, I saw the video. I was like, "What?" You know, yeah. and this is university, like University of Ghana, right? So I, apparently, a, a man of God went there, and this guy gave his life to Christ. Oh, he was wow. crying, rolling, begging God. I'm like, "Oh, you know." When I see that, I'm like, "Wow, something has changed in his life." 
yeah. it is not him trying to convince me because listen if you've been in the dark with certain people the more you convince them the more they will not believe you so let your light shine in their sight right let your light shine in their sight and they themselves would now testify that no something has changed about them that was said about the apostles the apostles christ came and he did not call the people in the tabernacle he called fishermen he called tax collectors he called like regular people who everyone knew that this guy they've never been to school they've never been to church they've never prayed they don't even know the laws of moses but when the day of Pentecost came the the, the the difference was that the people who got there they were like wow we know these people they are not learned so the fact that they are speaking fluently, the fact that they are working in power and miracle means something has actually come upon them. It mm. was the people around. And that actually made 3,000 people give their life to Christ on the first day. The next day, about 2,000 more people came to the church. And each and every day, many people were added to the church. Peter, and they did not go stand anywhere that, oh, now we are changed, we are no longer fishermen. But the works that came out of them, the fruit that they bared, the transformation was evident because when the Spirit of God comes upon a person, there is renewal, there is, and it's so evident. Everyone around just saw them and said, what? Are these people drunk? What is happening? We know these people, they are ordinary fishermen. They are tax collectors. In those days, tax collectors were worldly people. That's how they were seen. But like, like wow, look at them praying in tongues. Why are they saying this? Why are they doing miracles? Then now it, it was undeniable that something has actually come upon them. So yes, yeah. you came to God, you've been in the past. Listen, we've all tasted darkness before, we've all tasted, but when you become become a new creature and once you come stay, don't let anyone condemn you. Don't try to convince anyone. Okay. Let your light shine and people will see your light and glorify God. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Mrs. Okanta, did you want to add anything or we can move on? <laughs> I'll just add a, a little bit of it because I think Pastor have said a lot. So one thing that I want each and everyone who is in that situation to take notice, you have to be yourself. Love yourself and trust yourself because it's all about that mindset. When your life mm -hmm. is being transformed, it starts with the renewal of your mind. So if your mind is transformed, then as our pastor explained, it has to discern for your character, your traits to be revealed for others to see. But hence, yes, you might make certain mistakes because we are still learning, you are still growing. So you might make certain mistakes. You don't have to just, uh, I would say, don't, don't, don't fall and just stay there, but rather make conscious efforts. Mm -hmm to always renew. My husband always says something that when you wake up in the morning, you have to have a mind of always renewing your relationship with God. Mm. Always think about it that, okay, the past is gone. Yesterday, whatever that I did is gone. Now it's a new day. What can right. I do to improve my life? What can I do to make impact to the next generation? So you have to have a conscious mindset that you are always thinking positive. Mind you, mm -hmm. When it comes to negativity, a lot of your it, people around you, they will yeah. do everything to bring you down. But trust me, when you are going through that process, it's not an easy journey. But so far mm -hmm. as you are connected to the source, God will see you there. Thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. So um, we've established that to live or to have an identity of Christ, we must know Christ, right? We must try to be like Christ. So somebody may ask them, um, how do we imitate or follow Christ? And how do we know how Christ is like, how Christ lived, and how we can also live like him and put on his identity once we come into Christ? That's the S one. Okay, so this now, no one in this generation was born when Christ came, but at least we were born with eyes to see his name. And that is why what one musician said, you have to learn about him. Yeah, you have to learn about him. How would they know if no one preaches? How would they know if no one learns? You have to learn about him. That is where going through church. I didn't say going to church because everyone comes to church. I'm sure devils come to church. So going through church, you know, going through it and let church also going through you. So I, I counsel some of the youth and after 18 years, they go to college and they don't care about church. And I ask them, why, why don't you go to church? They're like, I, I stopped going when my parents stopped forcing me. Mm. You know, 
that means the 18 years of his life he was going to church by not going through church he was just going there <laughs> against his own will just going to sit there but he oh, was not the parents my but god yeah but because parents were forcing him parents were forcing him hey if you don't go you know eat in this house don't <laughs> touch the jollof until you go to church so, <laughs> you no know, some of us our parents did that too don't do that you are not eating in this house until you go to church <laughs> then they, they, they will come to church like that whatever the pastor is preaching they are like that and just sitting there <laughs> like that so now this guy is 18 years go to college and people tell him listen th- there is no parents here you are free to do anything you want my god that is where the true test comes and anyone who went to church but not through it they are exposed so i met mm. some of the youth and i'm like why did you stop going they're like oh because my parents start forcing me they're like yeah my, that is my mom's church that is my dad's church I, they were going to church but they were not transformed they were going to church but their heart was not changed 18 years of their life they threw it down the drain so that, that, that that's like the, the first thing we have to understand you know and now when we have that perspective that okay we can actually go through church and not be changed now let's learn about the things of christ and this is for the genuine people who actually went to church and they are eager to learn about christ the holy spirit will make it so easy mm. you can't do it on your own the bible says that when he comes he will what bring you into all truth you mm-hmm. cannot do it on your own there is always that spiritual factor we, we yeah we were not born to see the era of jesus christ but there is that holy spirit that this when you read the bible everything comes alive like i'm like wow this feels so real like there is this sweetness in your heart like the first time miranda found a boyfriend you know that passion sweetness in your heart like, that is the same feeling when you give your life to christ then you see that suddenly like everything is true you know the holy spirit gives you a conviction and the holy spirit actually amplifies whatever you are reading then now you go ahead and you pray that father if this is true let this happen then god begin to give you a christian experience then then you realize that the, the, this is not a myth this is not just a story it comes alive there were one day i was really sick i told my my brother go and get me a leave when he was on his way the lord spoke to me and said you pray for people to receive healing why do, why have you not prayed for yourself and i'm like yeah. you know sometimes yeah. you give give but you yourself yeah, you don't even think. then i'm like <laughs> i laid hands i'm like you go away <laughs> then he was like they have poured water on me I felt a too. Mm. By the time yeah. he came back from the bedroom, I was jumping. I he was like, wait, you were not sick. He was, he was like, you were not sick and you sent me. I'm like, you will not understand. You know, no, yeah. you don't, I will not understand. It My is a life. It, it is this passion. You know, it, you just, not, it, it is so hard to express it. And that is where you realize that, okay, now I'm actually living that life. So one, you have to learn about it. And with the help of the Holy Ghost, it comes alive. That is when you are able to actually act like a Christian. So I'll let the, the honorable woman of God add more to it. That was good. <laughs> okay. God bless. Uh, God bless you. God bless you, Sofo. I think Sofo has done justice to this question. But I will just, I'll say a summary. I'll just add a little bit of it. So as um, Pastor said, you have to be able to learn about who we are looking up to so what are the things that we have to learn about the way he lived the way when he came on earth the kind of challenges the life of this other of the person and when we we have the blueprint which is the bible that we are we have been given to learn as pastor said when christ came on earth none of us we were here on this we never saw what he did but the blueprint, which is the Bible, is what was given to us for us to know what he came here to do. So when you read, we, we have certain um, scriptures or Bibles that when you focus on them, you can know or uh, what he came or who this Christ is. When you read Matthew, I believe it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So if you really want to know who Christ is, for you to imitate him, that means you need to develop hunger for the word of God. Know who this person is. And trust me, sometimes uh, I will use myself, uh, my experience. Anytime I take the Bible at first, when I begin to read it, I'll fall asleep. And I'm like, hey, how can I embark on this journey without with this behavior? <laughs> like, uh, 
<laughs> reading just sometimes even one line, two lines, and then by the time oh, I realize oh, I'm yeah. asleep. But 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 when I take my phone and I'm going through social media, I can go through hours, five hours, six mm -hmm. hours, seven hours. Everything is watching. working over time. Exactly. <laughs> and this stuff that I'm watching is like it's not something that will benefit my life. It's just to laugh, just uh, yeah. release pressure it's nothing that is making impact but i right. enjoy watching those immediately i take bible ah, i'm gone so i was like you know what father you need to help me develop some hunger for this because if i'm not rooted in the word how can i live that lifestyle that i want how can i imitate you? so uh, with the teachings pastor mildred counselor mildred i listened to her message and she made up with an acronym for us to study the word of god and that changed my life and i will share it she said that how do you study the bible and she said she was also having challenges studying it and then god gave her that idea about soap soap s-o-a-p so that's the acronym and then the s stands for searching he said that sometimes because we we read the bible we read maybe king james king james but it's not making sense to us but we have other versions come down to your like even if it's easy to read holy bible whatever version that makes sense to you search whatever that you are going through what do you want clarification is it faith is it um repentance what do you need to mention that then search it on google find bible verse stories that pertains to that topic that you need clarification with and then study more when you search you will get the answers and then you have to be observant Observe the keywords, observe the lifestyle, whatever that you search. What are the things that they went through? What are the things that they did? This observation will lead to the A, which is asking questions. Then you begin to ask, ah, so if Sarah did that, 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 that then okay, bring it to reality. So in mm -hmm. my life, I need this. So does that mean if I do this, I'll face these consequences? Does that mean right. that if I don't do this, this is what the end results will be? So when you begin mm -hmm. to ask those questions, that is when it will motivate you to pray. That is the last part, the key. Then you, when you pray, you ask God. Prayer is a communication. Sometimes we do pray, 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 but it's two-way communication. When you pray to God, you need to wait on God to also speak to you. So that mm -hmm. is the time that your answered questions, you lay it down to him, and then he begins to give you the insight of whatever that you are looking the clarification that you are looking for so i'll say that yes we study the word of god and then we we, we have to imitate what the christ our mentor what he's doing sometimes it's not easy trust me that is why when you are going through you have to develop some anger to read the word of god to search ask questions be observant and then pray so that god will guide you along the way thank you Thank you so much. God bless you. So it's all really in reading the word because that's the only way that we can get to know Christ. Um, and I know that a lot of youth these days, well, they're changing. We're changing because my church is full of youth. And I, I don't like the idea that people don't like to go to church or the church hurt and all the other excuses they can come up with. But there are people that they go through all the week without opening their Bible, not even just mm -hmm. to read a line. At least, Auntie, you, you used to read one line and fall asleep, right? But there are people that won't even pick it up at all. Like, And so it's just this one Sunday that they can go to church and listen, at least listen to a word of God that will come out of the preacher's mouth and you know get their lives transformed even now until they won't do it because it's of so many reasons right but if we don't get into the word and how are we going to be able to change and pastor esman you mentioned that sometimes parents do force their children to come um to church with them some of them it works like when their children are forced they go it, it actually works but some of them it's like they're just going to please their parents so at this point when you're raising a child how do you make them desire um, Christ? Like when you love the Lord, nobody's gonna, like nobody forces me to come to church. I'm upstate and my church is downstate. And the last time I was coming, I, I could not come to church. I was so mad, like I was in my room 
crying. Like if you saw me, you think I would have like I have a broken heart or something. I'm like, I was just crying because I could not come to church and I just wanted to be there. Like that was my only goal, my only priority. So when you're raising children, how do you raise them to desire Christ so that they can learn more about Christ on their own and also desire to be in the house of God because the fellowship is also important. You know, your personal life, your personal studying about Christ, uh, living about Christ is important, but also fellowshipping, which is engaging in church is also important as well. And sometimes we leave that part out because people don't want to hear it, but it's true. We need to fellowship. You need to have a community that has the same faith as you. And when you're going through stuff, you have people to talk to. You have a pastor that, you know, God has sent to be a shepherd over your life, to lead you, to pray for you and stuff like that. So how do you raise up um, children? Maybe their parents out there struggling with the youth of these days. Like Auntie, you said, there's so many things right now on social media. Everybody has their own identity, all the fake celebrities teaching them all sort of things. And it's definitely getting harder. It's not even, I'm not even going to lie. It's harder, for, it's harder on parents, it's harder on the youth. So what are some of the things that they can do to help raise uh, children who desire to know like Christ and not be forced to participate in Christ activities? Okay, so let, let me step in. So this is, this is how it works. Most parents, right? force the kids to do certain things they themselves don't do. So <laughs> this guy wakes up and sees the mom and the dad <laughs> sipping beer in Italian, beer and whiskey, bah, and they tell you, don't drink, bad boy. If you drink, you go to hell. They, they just look at you like, oh, they'll go away, you know, that kind of thing. Like these kids, they have, Miranda, behave yourself. So that's no, the, 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 the kids are so smart. So someone told the dad, so you told me not to do it, but why are you doing it? Then he's like, I'm, 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 I'm a dad, I'm, you know, that kind of thing. So now you, you're actually telling the kid, once you grow, then you can do it. So now I, I went to a minister in Philadelphia, right? And this woman comes to me and said, my daughter wants a boyfriend so bad. And I, you know how she did it? And she was like, you don't know boyfriend until you are 18. And the girl didn't say anything. Oh my goodness. The girl, she didn't say anything. She didn't say nothing. 17th birthday she goes to the mom and said i'm one year away from a boyfriend the yeah. mom was like oh nothing so i actually went there when she was 18 i think a few weeks after her 18th birthday to minister to the youth now the mom is now begging me that now she said she's 18 and not nothing no one will say we change her nothing oh truly truly she went for a boyfriend moved out of the house at 19 she gave birth around 22 right now she has like a daughter i was like these kids be careful maybe parents are listening be careful what you tell the kids these kids whatever you want them to do live it let your life reflect it she packed mm. out of the house once she entered college she gave birth there was when she was 19 her, the vows day right she posted i had her on uh, on snapchat she posted uh, it's like they they went to an airbnb with the boyfriend with red candle dinner both of them just together i was like what? The way she didn't even respond, like, and, and it was funny because now at that point she was like, "Okay, my mom was telling me when I become an adult, certain things no one can tell me what to do. Absolutely. When I'm grown, I can drink. When I'm this, I can do it. So that they they humble themselves, go through that phase, but within themselves they are not changed. They are just waiting for that level or that threshold, and they will disprove anything you've taught them. They they will flash everything out of their system. Mm. Yeah, she got pregnant. I think when she was like 22, now she has a daughter, but like she's not married. She's not." Even the boyfriend, I think they broke up. Listen, we have to be honest. We have to live a life these kids can pick up, you know. Mm -hmm. Because me, if I was your kid and you're telling me, don't drink whilst you are holding beer, I will look at you and be like, I'll mom, what is that? Is that, is that pure water? Is that pure water? I'll tell you, what is that? What, what are you holding? These kids are so smart. So let's be realistic as parents. Like, let's be realistic. Let's be honest with them. You know, you can't mock. God cannot be mocked. We can't mock people. We, I mean, we do the same thing to God. God even said that certain people adore me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. We have to mm. preach and practice what we preach. Right. Wow. Thank you so much for being realistic. Uh, Mrs. Okanta. Well, thank you, Pastor Esmon. That's really deep. That's really deep. Um, one thing that I'll add to it is I'm a, I'm a parent. It's not easy to raise this generation. 
it is not easy it is only by the grace of god that we, we are doing what we are doing trust me so yes what pastor esmond said is very true you have to live the life you have to be the role model live that lifestyle mm -hmm. and then also one thing that i have realized in um i don't know if it's only africans or it's all parents but we love to enforce instead of we guiding the truth, yes guiding them allowing them to voice out what they are going through so we can guide them we don't take time to listen to them but what we do is don't do that do this. this one is no good <laughs> As, uh, church, church is the only place that is good. So yeah. when she's online and she listens to a pastor online and whatever he's going through or he's going through, in, what, the pastor, what the pastor is saying makes sense to him or her. He or she will take that advice. But mm -hmm. do we know if it's the right doctrine that mm -hmm. he or she is defending? So we have to be able to build a relationship with these children whereby they can never go out there and seek advice but they will feel free mm. to talk to us we shouldn't be judgmental that's one thing that some of us when we are growing it's like when you take your even if you have a boyfriend yes we all know it's no good you are telling us to prevent from that but hey, when you get to the teens you feel that pressure you, you feel that desire you want to experience other side as well everybody is doing it you want to do it but when i come mm. home and i tell my mom i have found a boyfriend Oh, no, no, hey. no, 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 that's not good. Hey, now, only one I said, I have found a boyfriend. Oh, you yes. mm -mm. But if we are able to embrace that, okay, fine, you find it. Now, you have to do this. We advise them, guide them, direct them, open the scriptures. We all learn it together, make it practical, and then give them the reason why or the consequences of that action. Because we are fond of telling them to stop. But why should I stop? And this Gen Z generation, it's not about you telling me to stop. Who oh, you want already more. know. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know why. Even as young as my children, eight years, nine years, six years, when you tell them to stop something, they will ask you, Mommy, why? 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 <laughs> why? But we, the parents, we are not learning enough to know the why. Mm. But because we have been told not to do, we oh, never did it. But see. we have not learned the reason why we shouldn't do such things. Therefore, mm. we are imposing these things, these things to our children. But we have to understand that this is in their computer generation. Everything they open the screen, they will research and find it. So it's either you learn with them and direct them, mm. or they will become whoever you want them to be. We can pray, but we need to guide them. Thank you. Thank let, you let me so add one, one, one thing to it. Mm -hmm. can, can I add like just one? So um, this is about two months ago. A, a mom, right? A mom was talking to me and he was like, African parents, it's so hard for us to be honest with the kids. We try to cover some truth mm -hmm. and lie to them. So the, the, the son was like six years, came to the mom, mom, where do babies come from, right? then mm -hmm. she's like you came from my knee cup what the <laughs> knee said, my knee opened and <laughs> so now he also put in the okay knee cap yeah. he went to school and the, and the teacher was like your mom is a lie <laughs> oh your mom lied to you so he he said he said it, it took her so long anytime he says anything the the, the guy would say you're a liar mom oh, you're a liar listen he said he said hey, a haunted her for so long and she was being honest to us he said these kids anything you lie about before there was no social media right now they will, they will go online and type it i, I saw a yeah. video I was, I was showing the people around me like i saw a video where the, the grandma was like chucky e. cheese is closed right then this kid takes the phone then he hit on the uh, google audio button and said is chucky e. cheese open <laughs> then then siri just be like oh chucky e. cheese is open to is the money you are like <laughs> Yeah. And this is like a five-year-old girl. It's like you said Chuck E. Cheese was close. And, then, and he's like, look at that. He said, like, How did you find out? He's like, oh, I just hit on this button and I just asked. These kids are smart. So may yeah. we be honest, you know, in Ghana, anything about sex, anything about this boyfriend, don't say, listen, the average first generational mom in here, right, gave birth before 21. It will shock you. 
Mm. You can go ask mm-hmm. your mom. It was shocking. Some of them, nineteen eighty seven. <laughs> you know, and I'm not, I'm not promoting this, but listen, we have to be honest. Let's share our experience, our mistakes. Yeah. Let's be real. As one, we have to be real. No boyfriend before twenty. Well, you, you know, you gave birth by seventeen. Now she will grow and she will now begin to do some calculations. Mom, if you are fifty and I'm twenty-two, how old you were you when you gave birth? You know, that kind of thing. These kids are smart. Let's be honest with them. Let's be genuinely honest. Because these kids are really small. Why you don't teach them? Someone else outside will teach them and they make you feel you are That's the worst right. parent ever. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Like, if you don't teach them, then somebody else is going to have to do it. And you don't know how, if they're going to give them the right information or not. Mm-hmm. Last question before we go. Okay, so how can our behaviors present a skewed or misleading image of Jesus to the world? And we're going to be ending with this question for today's episode. How can our behaviors present a skewed or misleading image of Jesus to the world? Okay. Um, Can I go? Oh, you want to go? Okay, go go first. First, you can go. Okay, so so this is the thing. I said something that we have to practice what we preach, and preaching doesn't necessarily you standing at the pulpit, right? You have to practice what you confess. If you confess you are of Christ, then you have to leave the values of Christ. You cannot confess Christ and be doing something else or be living the life of the devil or living the values of the world. The Bible says, do not conform to this world by being renewed by life, transformation of your mind. Once you come to Christ, now you accept everything that comes with Christ. It's a whole package. You cannot put on yourself a Christian, but then you have the worldly package. Some of us have come out of Egypt, but Egypt is still in us. And I always say this example. I was having a youth retreat, and I saw two boys. Then suddenly the Lord tells me, these guys, the reason why they are here for this retreat, they are praying for financial breakthrough. But when the money comes, the first ticket to Las Vegas and Miami, they want to see naked women. And it came, and I, I, I looked at them, I, I told them, listen, you guys are praying for money, but when the money comes, I can see both of you. They're like, wow, this is what we are discussing right now. They are, the yes. only reason why they've not gone to Miami because there is no money for flight and, and the hotels and all that. Once they get it, the first flight to Miami and Las Vegas, they are going there. So they are actually in the church, but the world is still in them. Mm. And that is a no-no. The reason why most people are refusing to come to Christ is that we are watching. I said one thing when we started, that let your light shine in the sight of men. People are watching you. Do you know when you are standing in darkness, right? Or when you are standing in the light, the people hiding in darkness, it's easy for them to see you because you become a spotlight. When there is darkness in the place and there is a spotlight and you are standing in the spotlight, Everyone else can see you, and that is how most theaters and like some some like you know those Broadway shows. That is how they react. They put the main mm-hmm. people who they want everyone to focus on. They put them in the spotlight, right? Mm-hmm. The people in the dark, they are watching those in the spotlight. Whenever there is something wrong, that is why on social media everyone is blasting Christians here and there because it's like many many people are marking and grading the scheme. Okay, you, if you are Christian, you are supposed to be like this. Christ did this. You are that Christ is forgiven. You are not forgiven. You are rude. You are, they, they, people are actually mm. grading and marking. And aside mm. the people grading and marking, spiritually we are surrounded by a cloud of witness. The Bible says we are surrounded by a cloud of witness. So let's lay aside every weight, every sin, every iniquity, anything that gives us a double standard. Let's throw everything aside and run the race that is preserved before us. And that is exactly what I want to say. So yes, you cannot just claim him. When you accept him, everything that comes with him, which is living a life, Christian life, living right, you know, being re- repentant, helping them, going to church, all the things you've already talked about, it has to be part of the package. You have to genuinely work your salvation daily. That is what I, I just want to say. This is Okanta. I think you can go ahead and give your submission now. Okay. 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 Thank you so much, um, Pastor. You, you've really said a lot. Very deep message. But um, one thing that I'll add to it is some of the things that does not help our um, 
as when we get to know our identity is disobedience. Mm. Um, I want us mm. to look at this story. It's 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 a simple, uh, or oh, it's a common scripture that we all know, talking about um, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden when mm. the um, serpent came to mm. Eve and presented a, a, an apple as our Sunday school teachers would tell us and then <laughs> uh, the serpent came and gave the apple to Eve and Eve ate it. So when I read that scripture, one thing that I started meditating on was when the when God created us in Genesis 1, it says, I have created you in my own image. Therefore, he has given us the authority. Whatever that God can do, we can do it. So we, that confidence mm. should be there. So when the serpent came to Eve and said, oh, God instructed you not to eat these fruits. He said, mm. yes. He said, because he doesn't want you to be like him. He doesn't want you like to him. know uh, the, the truth. Yes. So if at that mm. time, Eve knew who she was, if he knew her identity, that he that mm. uh, she has already been given the authority whatever that the devil is trying to convince her she has already been given but because sometimes we are curious i'm, I'm saying it to bring it to reality sometimes mm. in this generation yes we we are curious we want to explore we want to know more it's very good to explore mm. and grow and transform your life but think about the areas that you are growing the Bible says that mm -hmm. we, he has given us our choice. We can do whatever that we want to do. But at the same time, he cautioned us to be in light. So, yes, I understand some of the things doesn't make sense. Even sometimes when you read the Bible, some people will say that the Bible is a storybook. I want to live certain lifestyle so that I can also create mm -hmm. a version of my story, have an encounter in certain ways. It's very, it's okay, but you have to be careful how you are exploring it. I've heard that so many times. But one thing that we don't understand is the consequences. Whatever decision that you make, oh, yeah. there is a consequence there. So we have to be very careful. Know ourselves. We should know the kind of value, the authority that has been given to us. If they not know her identity, therefore the devil convinced her easily. So instead of her knowing her identity and obeyed the instructions that god gave her she didn't so at the end of the day look at her, where we are so it's good but we need to be obedient to the word of god when we read it we need to obey the instructions yes even if it doesn't make sense obey it because god knows us we are the product he is the manufacturer he knows us more than we know ourselves so if mm -hmm. he is guiding you certain that challenges is coming your way take it as a good thing that this challenge is coming my way begin to nurture begin to grow certain things so that it can shape you to become who god wants you to be thank you amen amen thank you so much i always tell my friends that there, there are certain experiences like i don't have to go through it like i don't have to go and explore it like i already know that if somebody if you're not married and if you go out with somebody have sex, you're gonna have a child out of wedlock, you're gonna go through stuff. The relationship, even in marriage, people already struggle. So how much more not you marry and having a child, you're gonna mm -hmm. suffer. There's there's no reason for me to go and explore and bear the consequences for me to learn through it. No, I'm gonna learn from somebody else's experience, you know, and this is why identity comes in. So when we're training or raising up our children and we're always telling them who, who they are in Christ, how to live as Christ, who Christ says they are. And when they're growing, they're going to have all these knowledge, obviously backing them with prayer too, because the enemy is working. They don't want us to know who we are in Christ because when we know who we are in Christ, we're sin, we're not going to be identified with sin. We're, we're going to try to live like Christ and they're not happy with that. So they always try to work. Like I say, the enemy works over time. So whilst we're teaching them, we're also praying and backing our teaching up a prayer that God, I'm leaving this shout to you. This I've, 
you know, I've sacrificed all my, I've teach this child, this child is now going to college. There are so many things that they're going to face in college, but you're a Holy Spirit, you're a reminder, you said you remind this, right? So you've, I've already put this in the child, remind them of who they are as they go. Remind them every obstacle, every challenges they face. And the children can go to college and come back, not change, and come back still righteous, and come back still in following the righteous path, right? So... Mm-hmm. Obviously, I always tell my friends that like you don't we don't have to go through things. We don't have to go through things to uh you know get consequences before we can learn from it. There are people there that, you know, I'm not saying they do not sin, but like I don't have a history of oh I used to club and I used to hang out with men. I don't have that history and that is okay. We don't have to have that history before we can be saved. You can be saved right from, you know, being little right from when your parents are taking you to church, right from when, you know, you get to know Christ yourself, you know, so that's also okay. And, okay, lastly, we're ending right now. So if you guys have anything that you want to share, any last words, any advice before we end this episode for today, and we can go ahead and close. Okay, so I'll say this. Be true to yourself, you know. Someone told me God actually knows your weaknesses and God understands. And I, I, I never knew, but when I grew, I, I became aware of it. We have made Christianity like, okay, it is like a, a robotic, like, you know, club that when you when you go, someone is manipulating you, the Bible, says, don't have fun, don't do this, lose your youth. No, there is, listen, sometimes I'll be here, Playing some praises, dancing, some you yeah. know, new dance on my yeah. piano, you know, sister piano. Right. Listen, you, 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 there is joy in, in Christ. There, there is a life in Christ. It is all in the mind. Don't let anyone entice you and push you to a limit. Once you put on the identity of Christ, live to it. Live to it. You know, this pleasures of this world is fading away anyways. You know, it's full of trouble, yeah. as you said. If you get pregnant, okay. some of some people are addicted to me. Some people are addicted to this. I meet people that That's I'm so addicted much. to masturbation, addicted to clubbing. And they have their have credit card, is, credit score is messed up. Because this yeah. life comes with the terror. It comes with certain things. You know, you have to always try to act like you are the freshest, with different cakes, different clothes. You, you, know, you have to, your paycheck to paycheck. Listen, there's yeah. a life. That is not worth it. Listen, it's not really worth it. And I and I won't lie to you. And I'm not telling you when you come to Christ, everything becomes greener. But then I want you to accept it. That listen, this is the new life, and the values of Christ become my values. And be true to yourself. Be true Amen. to yourself. When you are weak, when you, Bible says, so when you fall, we have an advocate. Even when you do a mistake, right? You run back to God and say, Father, I, I thought I was strong. I have I've fallen. But you need to be genuine. You need to be true to yourself. Don't try to cover it. Don't try to hide it. Don't leave double standards as we talked about. Just live your true self. And this is, you know, this is a Christian place. So yes, and God and the Holy Ghost will continue to teach you daily. You know, it, the salvation is worth daily. So you continue to live daily. Then you continue to live in that identity of Christ as we always just talked about. So that is what I think. Be true to yourself. And once you come into identity of Christ, live to the values, live to it. Do what Christ would do. You know, don't 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 be yeah. doing things that dark people would do. The past things you did, throw them away, throw them in the trash. Put on the identity of Christ and do things that Christ will. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. I'm gonna share one thing. I can't go into details because it's actually very serious. But this world is a very small world, and like you said, you know, when when we come into Christ, we want everybody to know. We we put on like, oh, I'm a Christian. I'm, you have to live to that. I'm a Christian title. I'm a that I'm a Christian. It's not just a title that you put on. You have to live it, and it doesn't matter wherever you are. Like I'm in here. I'm. It's a very small town, so. You would think that people don't know you or people don't really watch you. <laughs> people actually do. Like when I was here, and, and I didn't know that Pastor Esmond lived in Binghamton until when Auntie Ursula said that he was over here. And we used to live on my street. Like imagine if I was like all over the place, wayward, living to, he would have definitely mm-hmm. saw me. He would have definitely heard I about me. Expose you. He would have exposed me too because, yeah, I was here on the show you know, trying to act all Christian, but I'm here and living a different life. So we really have to, when we put on coming to Christ and 
you know, put on the title, I'm a Christian, we have to live up to that title, like um, Pastor Esmon, you mentioned. Like there's this some, some guy that has come into this area who back in the city, we know him as different. And he's also here living a different lifestyle. And thinking that nobody knew him, but God, the Holy Spirit works in mysterious ways, and He has been exposed. Like we, so we also we have to be very conscious. I know come, being a Christian is not easy. Like you said, it comes with battles. That's why we pray. So we pray to God to help us. Like everybody has weakness. I have my own weakness, and there are days where I am like, God, you have to help me. Like if you don't help me, I'm gonna fall right now, and He does. Mm -hmm. So. We have to communicate our weaknesses to him as well. He already knows, but sometimes you just have to open your mouth mm -hmm. and say, help me. You know, it's it's that easy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you have anything to add, Mrs. Okanta? Okay. So what I will add is um, it is never too late. It is never too late talking to anybody who thinks that it's too late for him or her to join the family it's never too late embrace yourself and then if you haven't joined i mean the family you are always welcome to join the family don't think that uh, i've done so much and uh i'm so dirty no come whatever that's whatever who, who you are come he is ready to welcome you and when you come on board embrace your unique self you were custom made you were created in a unique way so don't try to imitate others also be open to grow and change don't just think uh in a certain way that this is what um i mean this is what i'm I, I, if i'm Normally, when we are baby Christians, right, we tend to live in a certain way, chan -chan, like uh, as yeah. Pastor Esmond said, we, we, we don't want to live it. Even the way we dress, sometimes people will criticize the oh. way we dress, the way we talk, the way we make up. It's a, it's a whole lot. Be free, as Pastor Esmond said. Be free and live life, enjoy life. Christianity on Yamesum, and yet it's not a crime, it's not an abusive way. But the way certain people have describe that thing it doesn't even ask our generation to even come and serve god we yeah. have to make it attractive for them because it's like it has been described to them as uh, when you when you're a christian that means you don't enjoy like life some form of imprisonment like, yeah ah! you, know, you, are, you are not free yes, yes. so you are that's you, you not it. Have to be real yeah. exactly you gotta be real Live your christiana i think i think that there is a lady in the comment, uh, I think Abigail Wilson. We, we can take some tip from her. She knows how to enjoy a pastor, Christian. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we can go <laughs> chilling life. This is true. Yeah. Soft enjoy. Life. Soft life. <laughs> Just live that soft life. Enjoy. Go on vacation. Explore. I mean, enjoy. If you, and if we, you can we, afford it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then the Lord will provide. We, <laughs> and then we, we have to seek self-awareness through reflection i mean the thing is that through you you reflect on and then you make certain changes adapt to certain things that is how the growth work and then sure that you assess your strength and your weaknesses we all have ways that we have to refine we have our weaknesses we have our strength so the weaknesses that you think that uh, this thing is really is the thing that i can't control myself start praying about it seek god for to countries and then also set healthy boundaries and prioritize health care set healthy boundaries is very important most of the times if you don't set healthy boundaries you you begin to uh, add enter into certain uh, associations group of people certain things that by the time you realize we have to know that our community also influences our life so mm -hmm. if you think that i can just associate myself with anybody or any person you have to be intentional know where you are associating yourself is it going to impact your life or is it going to bring the devil out of you so that is what we need to assess and then set that healthy boundaries to help our work with that be a little bit easier because it's not smooth you have to make conscious effort have that mindset that i am thinking positive i am working towards even if i make mistakes it's still positive I'm still um, focusing 
on the uh, end goal. That's what Apostle Paul says. Just one thing that I do, forgetting about the past, I press on towards for a victorious crown. So it's not about your past. So this is for you to think about your future. Press on towards your identity. What is your purpose? You move, you press on, you learn, you acquire knowledge. That is the most important part. Thank you. Amen. God bless you both so much, Mr. Esmon and Mrs. Okanta. God bless you so much. Very insightful and powerful. We thank God for bringing us to this end. And we will continue next week. So everybody stay tuned. Share with your friends and family if you didn't already so that they can also be blessed by this discussion. Very important discussion as such. Thank you so much, uh, both of you, once again. And we hope to see you again soon. <laughs> Bye, everyone. I thank you so much. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
fuel felt just rise If you fell, just rise. Wipe the tears from your eyes. If you fell, just rise. If you fell, just rise. Wipe the tears from your eyes. If you fell, just rise. Wipe the tears, wipe the tears from your eyes. If you fell, just rise. Wipe the tears from your eyes. Broken pencils, broken pencils to rise. Keep on writing, fallen soldiers still rise. Keep on fighting, yeah. One day you lift up your eyes to the skies and your light will be shining, yeah. One day, you, one day you ring, your wedding bells go ring. One day you win, one day. Your wedding bells will ring. One day, one day you win. One day, the paper you pass it again. One day, the first class is waiting for you. One day, International scholarship is coming. Hey, scholarship, yes, it's coming. Yeah, you come out of your own house. One day you sub go ride your own car. One day, one day you win. One day, one day you will. One day, your album go hit. One day, your ministry go blow. One day, one day you will. One day, don't mind the haters, they don't know. One day, your enemies will see you on TV. Your haters will see you on Instagram. People will know that God has done it. The fixer of your life, He will fix it. Yeah, yeah, one day you win. 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 This heaven, you go make up. One day you win. One day you win. One day you will overcome this sin. You will break this addiction in your life. One day, one day you will win. Your bank account will read. Six figures, seven figures. Hey, one day you win. Yeah, one day you win. Don't give up. 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 One day you win. Yeah, one day you win. Yeah, yeah, one day.